It's our 50th episode! GitHub Universe tickets are on sale, Debian turns 30, the iMac turns 25, and a pick of the week that will have you ready to frag your friends. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. And this week, my shirt, which I absolutely adore, is the best, is from our merch shop, available at the githubshop.com. So if you want to get your own GitHub air quotes, tea, or any of our other awesome swag in person, you definitely want to come to GitHub Universe. That's right, GitHub Universe 2023 is back and coming to you in beautiful San Francisco, California, at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts on November 8th and 9th. And we are going to be streaming it online as well at GitHub Universe. Com. And, and, and great news, early bird tickets are on sale now. So if you want to save some money, you know, definitely, definitely act now. This year at GitHub Universe, we're going to be honing in on three different areas, the impact of AI on productivity, protecting your software with proactive security measures, and transforming the way that you work um, using a better developer experience. You know that I'm going to be there. So if you come, be sure to say hello. But look, like legitimately, this is one of my favorite developer conferences, and this was true long before I ever worked at GitHub, or even Microsoft for that matter. And um, the little bit that they let me see so far looks really great, and so this is an event that you don't want to miss. You can get all the details and your early bird tickets at githubuniverse.com, and I've got links to all that in the show notes and the description down below. Moving on to some celebratory news, Debian, which I might controversially call the most influential Linux distribution of all time, sorry Red Hat, uh, it turned 30 this week. That's right, 30 years ago this week, the late Ian Murdoch announced the imminent completion of a brand new Linux distribution, which he called the Debian Linux release. And I'm gonna read from the original message that Ian wrote. This is a release that I've put together basically from scratch. In other words, I didn't simply make some changes to SLS and call it a new release. I was inspired to put together this release after running SLS and generally being dissatisfied with much of it. And after much altering of SLS, I decided that it would be much easier to start from scratch. The base system is now virtually complete, though I'm still looking around to make sure I grabbed the most recent sources for everything, and I'd like to get some feedback before I add the fancy stuff. This is great. And look, 30 years later, the influence of Debian is genuinely hard to overstate, not just with the other distributions, most notably Ubuntu that use Debian as a base, but also the impact that Debian has had on how other free and open source projects are created and managed, even to this day. And so I wanna share a happy birthday to Debian and every person who's ever contributed to the broader Debian project and ecosystem. Thank you for doing what you do, and here's to 30 more years. Also, here's a fun fact. Every Debian release from 1996 onward is named after a character in Toy Story. Why? Well, because the then project leader worked at Pixar, so version 1.1 was called Buzz and it goes from there. Um, the, the unstable branch is actually known as Sid and that's perfect. Let's go home and play. It's a tradition that continues to this day. The latest uh, version is called uh, Bookworm. I love it. And I've got links down below to the Debian projects page, how you can contribute or participate, and to Ian's original Usenet post all the way back from 1993. And speaking of birthdays, do you wanna feel old? The iMac, the computer that inarguably saved Apple, turned 25 this week. That's right, that iconic Bondi Blue computer which shipped with USB ports, a modem, a CD-ROM, but no floppy drive, hit shelves 25 years ago this week. Now, the G4 iMac, that is my favorite computer design of all time, and I would buy one today with modern hardware, but I have many fond memories of the iMac and all of its variations throughout my life, and I probably should admit this, but a lot of my work that I do every day is still on a Mac style 2020 iMac, which was the last uh, Intel iMac, and I love it. And look, as an unabashed, absolute Apple super fan, uh, I am really, really glad that the iMac came out and saved the company because otherwise, like, what would I listen to and what would my phone be? So I've got a link in the show notes down below to a really great article that my friend Jason Snell wrote for The Verge on the iMac and um, some other uh, articles and memories. 
And now it's time for the GitHub Project Spotlight. And this is where I highlight one of my favorite open source projects on GitHub. And this week, I want to turn attention to HTMX. So HTMX is a fantastic project, and that is part of the GitHub Accelerator. So that's awesome. But I really, really love HTMX's ethos. So HTMX is a library that allows you to access modern browser features like AJAX, CSS transitions, WebSockets, server sent events directly in HTML rather than using JavaScript. The team even wrote this great haiku about it here. JavaScript fatigue, longing for a hypertext already in hand. Isn't that great? I've been playing around with HTMX and I really love what you can do with it. And it really does bring me back to like the days before you know, I had to have frameworks for my JavaScript frameworks, um, and, and I love the ethos, as I said. In the links down below, I've got a link to the HTMX GitHub repo, the homepage, and also the hypermedia.systems book, which goes into more details about kind of the ideas behind the project and, and what kind of their guiding um, stars are. I love it so much, so uh, kudos to that team. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so this one actually came out right after we published our episode last week, but I could not let it go unmentioned because it's just too big of a deal. So earlier this month, Bethesda surprised us with a surprise release of a new enhanced remastered version of Quake 2. Now, the game, I'm happy to say, is fantastic. It's a great port, and I've spent many hours revisiting my youth on my Steam Deck playing it. And for kids like me who did not have a game PC in 1998, but we did have a Nintendo 64, Quake 64 is also part of that release, so that's really cool. But here's the best part. In true id tradition, the source code for the new Quake 2 is up on GitHub so that you can mod it to your heart's content. And mods are really what made Quake so great, and it acted as an inspiration for many of the games that we still play today. So I've got links in the show notes and the description down below to the GitHub repo, the Bethesda blog about the new game, and the game itself. It's a really great time, and, and I love to see this being released open source. It's really awesome. Let me know your favorite memories of Quake 2, you know, the iMac, Debian, or anything else in the comments down below. That is going to do it for me. If you liked this episode, please give us a like. That really does help us out with the algorithm. And subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.